Our gracious host for the evening, the OWTU, but with collaboration from the Communications Workers Union, as members from the National Workers Union, Afro Raymond is raising his hand, Shabaka Campbell and my daughter Ayana from Children of the Revolution, Attila Music. We're going to have that interspersed, but we're going to have a reading from you. And in fact, this book is for those of you who walk with some money. Um, it's on special, Ozzy, you can tell them. It's Kafra's book and he say he can sign, he can do some book signings. Brothers and brothers, comrades all, good evening. I know it's a little bit late, but we're celebrating a very important and historical moment. Sisters and brothers, comrades all, good evening. Let me take this opportunity on behalf of the Oilfield Workers Trade Union to welcome you to this historic Lennox Pier Auditorium. And let me say it is also an honor to be the first speaker here who was born after 1970. <laughs> but, I just, but I want to say to you all that the spirit and fire of the 1970 revolution still lives on in a next generation of revolutionaries. I see my good comrade Attila Springer uh, was here, Shabaka is here, Rubaderi, Nicole. There's a whole new generation of young people who will be carrying on that battle and carrying on that fire. I, this book, For Bread, Justice, and Freedom, a political biography of George Weeks by none other than Kafra Kambon. And I would suggest that each one of us purchase this book because it's not just a biography by, in terms of dates and times, but rather it, is, it gives context. It gives a critical analysis of the period. And I heard many speakers talk about the importance of documenting and writing our own history. Well, Kafra Kambon has given us a true gem. He has given us an opportunity to continue to build on that spirit of the 1970 revolution. I really suggest that each and every one of us get a copy of this book, For Bread, Justice, and Freedom, a political biography of George Weeks by Kafra Kambon. So thank you, Kafra, on behalf of Trinidad and Tobago for giving us this important gem. I will be short. I will just read a few short passages. First is chapter 12, and the title of chapter 12 is Revolution. And here is a quote from George Weeks. And then suddenly it sweeps on you like a thief in the night. What? Not elections, but revolution. And the wretched of the earth stand up, realize that though they don't have bread or enough of it, they have feet and two of them. And they start to walk about the place. And they realize that though they don't have guns or tear gas, they have fists. And they start to clench them and throw them in the air. And they realize that though they don't have walkie-talkies, nor even one good microphone, they have voices. And they start to shout, power, power, power to the people. A quote by George Weeks, start of chapter 12. And I go to chapter 13, title, A Test of My Manhood. The phone rang shortly after 4 a.m. on April 21st, 1970. At that hour, it was either a threat or trouble. Somehow, Weeks knew it was trouble, and he was involved. Lennox Pierre at the other end of the line told him that they have just picked up who? Tabo. No need to explain who they were. Weeks got himself moving as quickly as he could and drove to Leonard's home. Was it something Dabo did yesterday? Or was this the anticipated state of emergency? This was the trend of discussion as he met with Granger and Leonard. It was wiser to treat it as the emergency, unless or until it could be determined otherwise. Weeks and Leonard went to the OWTU office while Granger waited behind. He asked them to arrange transportation to get him out of San Fernando to the north, where the base was stronger. By the time Weeks and Leonard reached the Paramount building, a police car pulled up behind them. The sergeant asked Weeks to accompany him to the station. <laughs> The superintendent wanted to talk to him. Weeks told him his office would be a more convenient place. When the police continued to press him, he insisted that if they did not have a warrant, he was not going. They left the premises and radioed the station. Weeks went into his office. He picked up the phone and alerted Kelshall. Kelshall was packed and on the next plane to England that day. 
At his age, prison was no place to be. But Weeks and Leonard would not get a chance to leave OWT office on their own. The police outside was, were, joined, were soon joined by reinforcements, and they needed no warrant. 36 armed men sufficed. Leonard was also given an invitation he could not refuse to join the talks. There, were, there was no point arguing other legal details at 6 a.m. in an empty OWT office. Another piece of the same chapter. April 21st, 1970, turned out to be a day of heroism for Trinidad and Tobago, the full story of which would emerge for weeks and other detainees, only over a long period of time. More snippets were added to what they picked up in prison after he and Leonard were taken to Nelson Island by Coast Guard boat at just about 5 o'clock that afternoon. Weeks had now landed on the same island where his hero had been brought in 1939, like him, a prisoner without charge. Weeks could not dwell then on the historic connection. His first preoccupation was with the present, the stories some detainees had to tell, those kidnapped later in the day who were part of the fray in the city before it broke up. Over the coming days, he would learn more as others were detained. And my final piece is the end of that, chap of that chapter, the last paragraph. Every act of struggle, every affirmation of the rightness of the goals of the revolution, every demonstration of support was a mitigation of the test that was the 1970 detention. Therefore, though it was a test which some failed, for a man with weak fighting spirit, ideological commitment, and experience, it was not just a grave test. When he was finally let out of the prison doors on November 17th, and he walked down Freedom Road, as Frederick Street was unofficially renamed, he had every right to feel satisfied that he had passed this test, but the real trials were yet to come. This is a short reading of the classic For Bread, Justice, and Freedom, a political biography of George Reese by Kafra Kamban. As we say, forward ever, backward never, forward ever, backward never, long live the 1970 revolution. <laughs>